Ian, first of all, I just want to get the sort of the uh, the nuts and bolts tidied up. How's um, how's Jake Reeves? Uh, improved through the week. Um, we haven't really pushed it to be honest because he, he doesn't need it from a training capacity. Um, it's just to rest the heel a little bit. So he's got progressively better every day. Um, so he tested it a bit today. We'll go out onto the pitch tomorrow, and hopefully all being well, um, you know, then he'll be okay for for Saturday. But you know, we've taken it a day at a time. We've tried to give him as much rest as he as he can. But yeah, he's made good progress. How, how would you rate his chances of, of making the game at the weekend? I'm quite confident um, that he'll play in the game. Um, I don't. We, we've done loads of scans and everything, and there's nothing that's damaged there. It's more uh, bad bruising and things like that. So it's kind of a pain tolerance, I guess. Um, so yeah, we're we're hoping that he's he's going to be no problem. Um, and any other concerns at all, or not at the moment? No. Um, you know, we've obviously got one more session to go and, and assess everything then. But at the moment, everything looks okay. Um, obviously, onto the game of the weekend. Then, how are you viewing this one? I mean, massive game for the fans, mm -hmm. massive game in the division, probably the biggest derby in the national league. Um, what are your thoughts going into it? Yeah, I mean, you, you said it all there. Really, it's a massive game, uh, local derby. We're at home, we get our fans. So, um, I think it's a good game um, on the TV. So, it's these are the kind of games that you want to be a part of. We we wanted to be in the playoffs so that we could have these kind of games and occasions and play with some added pressure and meaning on the game um, I think we all enjoy that so so then we look forward to the game How much um, homework have you done on Chesterfield this week because obviously Notts have had mixed results against them obviously went there and won earlier on in the season but, lo but lost at home what are sort of their main strengths going into this game? Yeah I mean they, they, they play forwards quite quickly and dynamically they, they're no problem to be quite direct and They'll, um, you know, they play for for territory really. You know, I, I saw the home game back and and seen some of their more recent games, and you know they have a lot of weapons with long throws and set pieces, and they certainly like to break rhythm of play, um, and and they have some quality in there. You know, they have some good players, so um, you know they're they're obviously a threat. I think without the ball, they want to be quite aggressive and and uh, front foot in terms of how they press so you know we, we'll expect to come under some pressure as well Obviously fans are allowed back in uh, at the weekend again how much of a difference do you think they will have um, in the game? Yeah I mean we've, we've had both sides of the coin now because we had uh, obviously we had the home game against Weymouth where we really felt the full force of our fans um, and it was fantastic and then we went down to Bromley and when they scored you know we felt the fans for them kind of galvanise them a little bit so we know that it can have an impact it's obviously up to us on the pitch to to give the fans something to shout about and, and inspire them a little bit so that's our responsibility so obviously I know if we do that we'll get the same back from the fans no doubt um, it's interesting when we when we spoke after the Bromley game last week and we were talking about stressful moments, you know, not losing that composure and yeah. and keep believing in the way that you're trying to play. Um, I'm just wondering how crucial the fans will be in that because there are going to be moments in the game where Chesterfield are going to have a, have a 10 to 15 minute spell. Um, I, I imagine that the fans backing through that period is going to be absolutely vital, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think one thing that fans can do is they can switch momentum in games. Um, you know, so small moments can change. So if they're having ten or fifteen minutes, and then you know the fans come back into voice, suddenly it can switch switch the momentum into our favour. So we know that they they play that role and play that part, and we don't underestimate that. But at the same time, you know, we know when we play, especially you know, as we hopefully you know, if we were to play more in the playoffs after this game, we're going to play good teams. You play the top teams when you get into playoffs. So you know and respect that they're going to have moments in the game where they put you under pressure. So I think we just stay focused on on uh, what we need to do and, and the good things that we've done recently and, and hopefully that can uh, be beneficial for us. How much are you relishing the game at the weekend? Because obviously you came in, you had a bit of a, a tricky start, but then fantastic form towards the, the back end of the season. Um, these are these are the games that all head coaches, managers want to want to be involved in. Yeah, head coaches, fans, players. I think everyone wanted. You know, we wanted to be in the playoffs for obviously to give ourselves a chance of promotion, but also to play in kind of games like this. So, you know, we uh, think you enjoy the challenge, and and we know there's pressure on the game, but that's normal. I think we we've, we've actually performed better when we've had more pressure on us. When you think about 
the game like Sutton and Wrexham away and, and then the minute the pressure was off a little bit against Bromley we weren't as good so I think that we, we kind of embraced that a little bit and I think it, we you know we all enjoy it um, I'm just interested to know because you've got a, 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 a squad with some vastly experienced players in there the likes of your Michael Doyles your Jim O'Briens your Connells your Ben Turners how crucial are those players going to be for you at the weekend not just in terms of what they bring on the pitch but their sort of their attitude off it yeah, but do you know what? It's been consistent with them throughout, so I don't think that they're going to do anything special or different. Um, you know, from Michael Doyle, Ben Turner, Jim, Connell, all the experienced guys that we've got have contributed massively off the pitch, um, whether they've played or not. And I think that's all gone towards, you know, the environment and why we've started to pick up and, and improve. So I don't think they necessarily will do anything different. I think experienced players kind of understand context and moments of games where they maybe need to they've been through this road before so they know how to handle those kind of things which is great to have but I think in general they, they've been excellent day to day anyway so I, d I doubt they'll do anything different to what, what they have been doing um, Obviously extra time and, and penalties it's obviously <laughs> with the European Championships coming up as well um, What? Um, how much of the players been practising penalties this week? Connell's just told us he's had a pretty good record OK I haven't seen that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I yeah, probably does. Um, yeah, the, the players are taking a few after the training sessions and just getting a feel for it. I mean, nothing can replicate how it is in that moment. But I always think it's good for them to have a few, a few penalties. But you know, we 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 focus more of our time on the the first ninety minutes uh, to get that right, and then you know, if it comes to penalties, it comes to penalties. And uh, you know, we have good players with composure, so. I, I don't worry about that. Lovely. Hi, Ian. Good to see you. Oh, just, yeah. going back, just picking up there on what, what you were saying to Lee about the penalties and extra time. Do, do, is there anything you can do, or, or what do you do, knowing that a, a game could go to extra time? Do you do you still want the players to give everything for 90 minutes, yeah. and then you just kind of pick it up from there and see where you're at? Or do you have to keep a little bit in the tank, unless obviously you're 3-0 up, but a little bit in the tank in case... You've got to play a bit longer. Uh, no, I don't think we save anything for extra time. But, you know, we get one extra sub going into the extra time. So we have the possibility of another tactical change, which is good. Um, I'm shocked that the league haven't allowed all the teams in the playoff to have seven subs. I think it's it's crazy that we, they don't allow that in at this stage of the season after such an intense period. But that's what that's what they decide. But, you know, so we, we're, of course, limited to our five subs, but in the extra time, we get to use another one to put the fresh legs on. Um, and I think you, you've just got to know how to manage the game. As you get more tired, you choose the runs that you want to take forwards, you know when you've got to keep the ball. So it's probably more tactical than physical, I think. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be hot as well. So as you say about the seven subs, I mean, that could have been, you know, really key, couldn't it, if they're playing in heat, as, you know, as well, this time of year. Yeah, I mean, most, let's be honest, like most proper leagues have seven subs. Um, that's normal. So it's a bit disappointing that they don't look at that, really, uh, especially at, at the stage of season that we're at, considering the players and things like that. But, you know, it's going to be the same for everybody. Um, so it is what it is. But, you know, certainly considering the time of year and the volume of games, it, it makes sense to, to protect teams like that. But um, at the same time, we're going to have five, four to choose from if it does go to extra time. But our main focus is to to put a game plan to try and do our job in 90 minutes, really. See the lighting, or you've caught a bit of sunburn yourself out there this week? Could be a bit of lighting, a bit of both, a bit of both. A bit of the English skin combined with the lighting, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've talked about, obviously, allowing for the extra time, but when it's a game which is effectively, they're all cup finals now, aren't they, if you, if you go all the way or whatever. Yeah. Tactically, is it the same? It is to begin with, I think. Um, I think it is to begin with. You, you just approach the game like any other. So you kind of have, um, you know, we, we look at their strengths, their weaknesses, and we do the same with ours. So we approach the game to try and win it, and we win it in how, how we would normally do. But we also understand that if we're 1-0 up, for example, with 30 minutes to go, there's a high chance that they'll play with more risk than what would normally happen in a league game. So we have to kind of counterbalance that. And at the same time, maybe we have to play with more risk if we're behind because the stakes are higher and you only have one game and you know 
a draw doesn't get anybody anywhere. So you have to win the game. Um, so I guess that you start out as normal, trying to win the game, and then as the game progresses, decisions change. Um, but you know, I've been, I've been in knockout games and cup games and extra time games before um, as a manager. So I've experienced that. Do you look forward to it? Is it a nervous tension? I mean, as you say, you've been in big games like this before. Yeah, but I, in many ways, I enjoy it because that's why we want to play in these games. You know, I really look forward to the weekend and look forward to the game. But like any anybody, I think any coach would say, in big games, you feel some nerves, and and certainly when the game kicks off, you know that you kind of hand over to the players then, and and my job's done through the week. So, um, you know. It's you, you have those feelings, but I think you enjoy that as well. It's um, it's great to be a part of these sort of games. And your form, I, I'm saying to Connell just now, that how often do you see a team that looks like it is going to miss out in the playoffs and they put the form together, they get in, and then there's a kind of momentum just building. And, and all right, we, we can ignore Bromley because you could have won it and you didn't need it really. So you've got this momentum. Yeah, I, I think I said like weeks ago, really, we were going through a... a a bad run of games and I said the key for us was to always build momentum towards the end of the season but you have to look and Chesterfield have done very much the same so um, you know we shouldn't underestimate the momentum that they also have and they won last week and they'll come with that so we understand that um, so I think it's two teams that have been in good form and and uh, two teams with good players that are, are going to come and probably both attack the game Nice one mate good luck Brilliant thank you Hi, Ian. I'm uh, Owen from Knotts TV, just sitting in for Jake while he's, um, while he's on leave. No problem. Um, I mean, a big thing will be having the fans in the stadium backing you again. Has, has that driven home to you just how much, um, you know, being back in the, in the Football League means for a club like Knotts County, that, the, the people behind you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can just feel it. You feel it around the club that, you know, this is where we believe that we belong and we want to be there so you know everybody everybody is working really hard for that and that's what we want um but you know we have to do our job in in all of the games now and it's certainly not going to be easy to to make it it's the end of a long season but you know we we, we believe in ourselves and and we want to be able to do it because we know that it means a lot to the supporters and and everybody around the club i suppose the the, the other side of the coin when you talk about the support the backing is, is the added scrutiny of people in the stadium shouting, sighing, cheering, moaning, whatever. Have you done anything to pre prepare for that? And if, if so, then what? Um, personally or for the team? For the team. For the team. <laughs> no, no, not really. I think with the, the players are used to playing in front of crowds and used to play, well, although not recently, but, you know, so, someone like Michael Doyle spent his entire career playing in front of big crowds. So, we, you know, crowds is emotive and it goes up and down. But I think when we're in it, we kind of just really try and focus on our on our job. The local rivalry of it being two big clubs and it being uh, an East Midlands derby as well. What do you think that adds to the occasion? Yeah, I mean, always when you're playing a derby game, there's maybe a little bit extra in there in terms of like the the two teams are. Of relatively local and that, that of course certainly in this league that it's two that is a, a local derby so yeah it adds a little bit extra to it I, say, I think it normally adds more when the, there's both sets of fans there as well um, so maybe that just takes the edge off um, a little bit from from uh, their perspective I guess you know we've got our fans in place but they don't have theirs um, so but yeah local derby you know you want to win every game but especially those that are close to you you want to I mean Lee, Lee touched on the um, penalty practice already but I suppose the experience of playing in a playoff game must be different to, to almost anything else have you done anything else extra in terms of preparations whether it's training and different analysis to how you would normally do it not particularly because we, do, we kind of approach every game in detail and look at the opposition and look at how we're going to try and win the game and I don't think we suddenly need to scrap that and do a new process for for a new game. I think we have to focus on what's been working for us in recent weeks um, and just replay that. And yeah, I think we have a good 
right now we're in a good place with how we want to play and I think the players understand that so we stick to those principles and um, yeah the, the players have to just approach it as if we're going to play a, a team another team to, to try and win the game Amazing thank you very much Brilliant thanks Owen Anything else for anybody? No, no best of luck Ian for, for Saturday Thanks guys Good luck